Hey, it's Josh from Unit 6. Our new album, Truth Decay, is out January 27th. Check it out. Beautiful, mate. Thanks for joining us today, brother. Nice, man. Thanks for having me, dude. No worries. As you say, you, me, at six, release your new album, Truth Decay, on January the 27th. So that's a fair way off, man. Like, what's this period like for you waiting for it to come out? Like, it's all finished and done and in the can. Do you sort of sit back and think, what could I have done different? Or do you put it to bed? Like, uh, you got to put it to bed. I mean, if not, if not, the, because uh, ultimately a song's never finished, you know, like, um, mm -hmm. there's always something you could do or you could convince yourself you've got to do rewrites or change in um aspects of the song but yeah i think this period of time now is kind of luckily for us we've got that that sweet kind of christmas period coming up where we can kind of just like switch off if you like but um traditionally yeah the lead up to any album is is quite frustrating because it's just like you know you, you you wish you were one of those artists you could drop an album like the next day record it and yeah. drop it day, but um yeah it's, it's the it's the kind of the build-up the anticipation of, of hoping people feel the same way um that you do about it um and that it kind of leaves an imprint on on your fans that they you know they stick around that sort of vibe so uh, <laughs> we'll see man we'll see what happens <laughs> so tell us a bit about the album from a musical perspective bro and what you're going for with it so i think um at the start of it we were talking about um start the process when we started writing we went on a couple of like airbnb writing trips and we were talking about you know what what you meet six meant to us and i think um the the value and kind of understanding what kind of record we wanted to make because sucker punch was a great record it was you know had versatility and you know lots of different layers to it but it was also like a bit of a mix and mash record you know like it wasn't one thing it wasn't the other it was quite a kind of spread across lots of different genres and subgenres, and i think with this we were kind of really keen to focus in on one particular sound um yep. so we started listening to like our band basically and going through our back catalog and identified what we thought our strengths were and we kind of all unanimously agreed that you know we, we loved we still love being in the band generally but i mean we loved a particular period of our time where we were uh, between like hold me down since never sleep and cavity youth and we're sort of doing like emo rock um and pop punk and that sort of stuff and we're like right how can we do this in 2022 without it feeling like contrived and like you know forced anything like that and if it felt natural and, and sounded good then we were going to run with it and we started writing a couple of tunes and we're like yeah this feels good this feels like we're We'd, we, we've evolved enough that we can come back to this and and like i said we've got something different to say something different to offer that particular route if you like so um yeah i think that would be the these way to describe it would be like retrospective you meet six but in like 2022 you know i just mentioned then that you, you sort of sat out and discussed what you meet six meant to you guys so what, what was the actual answer to that like what, what what does it mean to you these days um I, I mean obviously it's, it's it's been a vehicle for us to travel and for us to as you know essentially do what we you know all love doing for a living which is being creative um and making music uh performing um but i think it was you know in those conversations it was like what what do we think we've done well you know what do we think mm -hmm when when we when we leave the table when we're no longer a band like what are people going to remember you meet six for are they going to remember you meet six and if they do what they're going to say about it so i think it was just about understanding you know what our strengths are because it's and also more importantly what our weaknesses are and what things we haven't really done well because i think it's only about you know when you're that honest with yourself that you can move forward and you know contribute um something different to the conversation so yeah um but you know like like i said like you meet six has been kind of the cornerstone for all five of our, of our lives for the last 18 years so since we were <laughs> in high school so it's 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 pretty much it's all consuming you know it's, it's pretty much all we are as people as well is is very strongly linked to this band and what this band does so yeah, yeah. so today you release the songs are uh, deep cuts no future and mixed emotions from the album so would you say that they're a good sonic representation of what to expect? I think so. I think um, No Future is probably the more leans more to the heavier side of things. 
Uh, I think there's only maybe one other song that would have that kind of sound, but mixed emotions and deep cuts is very much in in vein of of, of where the record's at. Um, yeah, and as I said, like if you picked up on the band on if you've been a fan of the band since Hold Me Down and Sinners, or if you've if those are your favorite records, then I think that um, Truth to K will definitely be a record that yeah you'll have a lot of appreciation for for sure. And the press release says that it gives a sophisticated nod to the music you me at six grew up on but with a modern twist would you agree with that statement yeah i don't know who wrote that but they smashed it um yeah <laughs> um, yeah I, yeah i think so i mean look at the end of the day it was, it was that thing of what it's kind of touched on before is it like you know us wanting to circle back almost to a sound that we've done before and previously um and again, it, it ties into when did the band feel, you know, like like the shackles are off the most, and it definitely felt it during that time. Um, and I think there's a there's definitely a renaissance of of the scene generally, and I think that um, I guess that tied into the psyche when we're making the record of, you know, well, I love seeing what some of the new artists are doing when they're doing kind of this kind of music, but um very much the opinion that no one does it the way that we do it in particular in england so it's kind of like well we need to con you know we need to be part of that conversation for sure um but you know there's there's something about going back and listening to songs that would you know shaped your formative years you know like as a teenager or a young a young adult um and so we, we did a lot of that whilst we were recording uh, we were in Santorini and we, and we listened. I mean, when we, it, it, more often than not, it's the stuff that you're kind of consuming, if you like, during the time of being creative that it always bleeds into the record. So Sucker Punch was like, you know, we were listening to a lot, a lot of hip hop, a lot of R&B, a lot of dance music. We weren't really listening to guitar bands, you know, because we were like, there's nothing that was like feeding us, if that makes sense. And then on this record, it's like, you know, uh after after hours we'd be, we'd be chucking on taking back sunday and fallout boy and my cam and um you know putting on e-band it was ever on drive through records you know finch yeah <laughs> remember starting line um and just stuff that you know because it's it's good because it, it it provokes uh for us anyway it was provoking a conversation of ah oh, do you remember when we did that and ah oh, do you remember that house party we went to when fucking bloody blah, blah did that and oh yeah shit and because it's it just all these memories come flooding in and so I think it's impossible for that not to kind of penetrate your creative creative space, you know? So, um, yeah, it all very much bled into what we're doing. And I guess, you know, we, we, we try not to overthink. I think that was, that was the, only, the main criticism I have of Sucker Punch would be that, you know, I love that record. It's so versatile and offers a lot, but like, there was a lot of constantly like really thinking about what we were doing. Whereas Truth Decay was so effortless. It was just such a joy to make it. It was like, yeah. like I was like, I know, I understand this, this whole route that we've got to take. It was like, you know, there was no real, there was no writing on site. There was no kind of like, there was, there was pre-pro when we were like trying to work out like mid-lates and finessing stuff. But, you know, it was, it was all instinctive. It was, you know, and I think that sometimes is, you, we can overcomplicate stuff as as musicians and as artists. Like you know, we try and think of all these different things that we need to um, to take take into account. But ultimately, music should be, you know, just effortless. Really, it should be it should pour out of you. And that's usually when we make our best stuff is when we don't overthink stuff. So yeah, that's kind of where I landed with it on Truth Decay. Uh -huh. So Sucker Punch was called your most radical record to date. So along those lines, would you say that Truth Decay is, is more safe? No, because I think I think we making this record was quite a risky one for us because if you make an album that for me anyway, if you make an album that's even remotely close to records you've made before, then you failed. I think you should be constantly trying to uh challenge yourself it should be challenging your listener as well um and we were very aware of that so i think like it's you know and also doing something as i said like that you were renowned for doing almost you know eight ten years later it could have 
it could have come across as really like kind of tragic. Um, yeah. Whereas, whereas like I feel like you know, or all, like, all like accepting defeat, like oh, you couldn't do that other stuff, so now you've just gone back to ground zero. Whereas for us, it was more a thing of let's utilize all the experience like life experience also the experience we have of being in a studio and writing songs and you know re getting a bit more technical with something that we can do genuinely you know as i said quite effortlessly but then how do we like upgrade it if you like how do we supercharge it um and i think you know we've made i think we've made records that have been left turns for us whereas which have ultimately then led us to making a record like Truth to Cave because we've, as I said, we've picked up so much along the way. Um, but yeah, there was definitely nothing safe about doing something that feels familiar because you then need to challenge that stereotype if you like. You can't, if, yeah, you need to kind of go in another level, go, whether it be your lyrical content or, you know, just the way you present something there's i mean there's so many bands that i have loved and been on the journey with but then it will get to like their third or fourth album i'm like a this either is just not very good or b sounds exactly like the last record and the record before that and you know i think there's there's something to be said for that and there is um there is a value to that but i just think i don't know as a fan of music i want to I want to know more about your story and I don't know if you can just repeating the same thing to me is, is not going to do that um, and there's a David Bowie quote um, where he's I can't I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit but he's <laughs> saying that you know if a musician um, that the, the, the most dangerous position a musician can be in is to feel safe when making their art um, and you know, so yeah, Truth to for me is definitely not a safe record just because it was an enjoyable process and felt good and felt like, oh fuck, I feel comfortable in this space doesn't mean that, um, yeah, I feel like it was safe in that sense. But I understand, I understand your angle on your question. But yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I mean, when I listen back to it, I don't go, yeah, this this is a, uh, this is good, this is easy for sure. Yeah. Well, very well answered, mate. Very well answered. Thanks. you've got collaborations on two songs what um one with Rail reynolds on no future and then you've got cody on a love letter to those who feel lost so run us through those songs individually and what each guest brought to it absolutely man so um and shikari a band uh that we <laughs> we grew up with ultimately playing like myspace books floor shows around the country you know um and we were both like coming at it from a very weird position in terms of like you know it was a it was an amazing time but it's just so weird and it was like it was so diy it was unreal and you know they used to play our local venue in guildford quite a lot and um so we we've known them since then and just always been um admiring either from afar or from you know like at festivals together or you know award ceremonies or whatever or just generally down the pub but we've never we've never taught <laughs> we've never done like anything creative together um but always been fans of, of one another and um we had on the future i was like this song could go up another level and there's something about rao's kind of ferocity and the the way he spits things like yeah, yep. where it just like it's like oh you know it gives it that stink it's just like <laughs> you know, this is good and uh i literally just voice note and be like look i've got this song and i just think you would elevate it you just take it to another thing and i would love for you to bring in your enshikari production for a child, for the for the bridge onwards and like bring in that energy and, and that thing that it's you know shikari are one of those bands that just are constantly just every time they could sing i'm like Fuck, i don't think they could go there you know like they're i think they're yeah. an old band um and so when Rao came back as excited to be asked as i was to ask him i knew straight away that it was like yeah this is perfect like something that i've learned especially on this record having been in many conversations of many different uh singers to be on this record is if somebody doesn't 
it still doesn't give you the the feeling that they're fucking gassed don't have them on your record if it feels remotely like they're going to try and squeeze in some studio time to potentially facilitate it but then there's some uh, hurdles with their label their manager just no whereas Raul's like yeah. but in, yes came back within a day came back with uh, a rough sketch of it and then you know was in the studio working on a shikari record but you know slammed this out for us and i was just like this is fucking class so i think everything that i wanted from for the for no future with Raul's involvement came to fruition um and cody when i was putting it out there on on um on the internet being like yo which artist should i be checking out who would you love to hear work with you at six blah, blah, blah. one of my friends um matt hughes who have been for a very long time uh he's like a, a pr guy and he just messaged me been like you've got to listen to this girl's voice and i heard her song um uh, i should have known better and i was just like fucking hell like i don't think i've had something like that in a very long time if not ever uh, i literally just messaged her on twitter been like i don't know where or how but you need to be on our record like i need people <laughs> I need people to hear your voice because you deserve you not know, you deserve like oh you meet six the oh so powerful oracle of music but i was like people if we can be a platform for you to people to be to hear you and discover you then i, I have to be on that side of the conversation so yeah. and she was so gassed she's um she's also on shikari track as well that's just come out so unbeknownst to either us or shikari she was you, you know featuring on both records and oh, when, wow. when it came to kind of to light I was like saying to her I was like this is so cool because she's a massive fan of Shikari she's a massive fan of Yumi at six so it's like we've kind of got us I don't think she'd be offended by me calling her a super fan of both bands on both records at the same time it's like this is incredible it's that be. yeah that, and that the universe can do that like you know she's yeah. been coming to shows for literally 15 years and like you know wow. so right now she's in the record so uh, but she's just such an incredible person like i honestly i don't think i've met many people like her she's um yeah she's a force to be reckoned with and, and i just i think people are going to really enjoy uh her, her her on our track and also on the shikari track so um, yeah that's how those those features came around mate cool and a love letter is actually the last song on the album mate it, it, it is a beautiful song you're right but and it's an unexpectedly calm way to leave things why, why did you leave it like that i think um it's for me it ties up the record in terms of what it's talking about lyrically um okay. i think the record kind of touches it touches on a couple of different moments of turbulence or like whether it's mine or somebody else's um and that song was just kind of a reminder like you know when you're feeling shit just it will pass you know it's kind of the sentiment that i'm trying to give in that song like take it as it comes and you're feeling lost um you know the the line where it's saying come back's the hardest part when your world falls apart like is it's all about just being calm in the face of adversity because it's i definitely struggled over the years with understanding to be patient within moments within bad moments or moments that are kind of surfacing pain or struggle or whatever it's just that it's you, sometimes you try and hit fast forward and you want to get through it as quickly as possible but actually you learn the most i think you grow the most when you take your time with it you understand why something bad is happening and how if you can control it what you're going to do differently and if you can't then trying to understand what some of the warning signs can be or whatever so i feel like for a record that's talking about you know well the reason we came up with the title truth to k is because we're, we're saying you know there's always a, a two-sided um perspective on the truth you know you either are being told the truth or you're being given a version which is distorted and i wanted the record when people finish it to kind of hear that song at the very end and go okay cool as a rap this is tying it up in a bow been like it's all good move on to the next one come again you know so that was kind of the thinking behind it we haven't really i don't think we've ever really ended a, a record maybe except for sinners when we had when we were younger at the end of it but we we often try and 
do our, our track listing like it was a set list, like start with some big hitters, end on some big hitters, and then there's some shit in the middle. Um, <laughs> we, 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 try to like, we just tried to go with what felt right. I know it's, it's weird. It was, it wasn't, I remember even like when we were going round and round circles, um, because we try every from the band like submits what they would have as their track listing and then we all sit down and have a meeting about it but all of us had deep cuts at the start and love led at the very end so it was kind of like so it, clearly it was meant to go down that way at least internally for us so <laughs> that's enough mate <laughs> all right joshua thanks again mate it's always a pleasure chatting with you my friend truth decay is out on january the 27th and i've been lucky enough to have a listen to it and she's a solid effort mate you've done well i think you've achieved everything that you said you've set out to mate so congratulations thanks chris i appreciate it man and thanks again for your time as always